Hello everyone and welcome back to what I guess would be season two of Let's Paint and Eye Racing. It's been quite a while since I last made a video and frankly I kind of missed it a little bit so that so I figured I'd start making a new set of videos this time looks like we're painting the BMW and I picked a car that I think is I think one of my more popular cars uh, and hopefully painting this one I'll show a couple of new techniques and uh, a couple of old techniques so let's get right into it so this is a car I already painted uh, I'm basically going to use this as a starting point for what I'm gonna paint because it's got a bunch of stuff in here that I kinda like already so I can actually just go from there so let's just control F2 there oh okay let's change the action first so looks like I was painting the track last so this is what I do I have all of the actions I've used are all in here so I just go ahead and find my car here go let's try now there we go so usually as a starting point what I do is I take a car I've already painted and they basically just start deleting stuff so I made a copy of this right here on my desktop and I'm just gonna start deleting now stuff that I don't want so I want that stuff let's just turn that off and keep it this stuff can oops this stuff can go nose that can go that can go that can go and ooh. Uh, let's just turn that off for now that and that there's some metallics here I don't think these are the right labeled properly but okay let's just switch them off for now don't need that 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 Ooh. let's keep the roof get rid of all of this stuff all of that trunk lid left right left right let's get rid of all that stuff so we've stripped the card down now so, and so we can start painting. So what I'm going to be painting is a car that I've painted a few times. I painted as a rough. I painted it as a your Corvette, and I painted it as a Radical. But we're going to be using the rough where you at here as the base, and it's the Golf racing car that I'm sure you've seen on Trading Paints or my thread. If you've been following Trading Paints or my thread, you've probably seen this car. So let's open it up to get started. Okay, so first things first, let's, oh, I already have swatches for this. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's take the swatches just so we have our color palettes and we can delete the old one because we're not going to need it and so now you're going to see why I like doing things in layers and why I like doing them grouped because you're going to see how simple it is now to just remake one of these paint schemes on a different car so let's just find I'm going to start I usually start these cars on the hood that's the easiest place to start. So let's scroll around here. Trunk, nose, hood. Okay, so we just right click, duplicate, chuck it onto the BMW. So let's see, let's get rid of this guy here because we're not gonna need that. Looked like it was some sort of fill. Okay, so there we go. It's a good starting point. So let's see. 
Okay, so this is just the middle stuff. And the middle of the car is here. Okay, so let's see. Here's the middle of the car. So it's maybe something like that. Right? And so let's draw this box. This to do the uh, blue side of the car. So. And let's actually take this and and put it down here so we can see the wireframe uh, da, da, da. and let's just see let's see where this gets us before we get too deep into it hmm hmm Maybe, hmm, it looks like it needs to be bigger, right? It looks like, yeah, okay, so let's just, let's make it bigger. So, and this is why you want to use vectors and shapes rather than rastered layers, because what I'm doing right now, if you did it on a rastered layer, would look horrible, absolutely horrible. Let's make it longer so it fits. So... And let's put it like that. Let's grab this bottom piece here. Let's just make it fill the whole thing out because this is all supposed to be blue anyway. Yeah, it doesn't care. So let's just do it like that. I'm gonna, uh, so what I'm actually planning on doing is I think I'm going to put it like this. Not really worried about where all of these pieces end up. And then I'm just going to, to mask, put a mask on this piece and just mask out all this crap like on the hood and on the right left side here. Right now, I'm just concerned about getting this lined up and sized in nicely. Hmm. Uh, I think it needs to be moved to the left a little bit. Let's see. Let's see. The mouse is still broken, so... Might have to bear with me on that. Where is that little... This piece, I think. The one that doesn't really fit in. Yeah, it's down there. Oh, I see. Okay. So... This is the center line. If I look at like this, it's just off the center. So let's... Let's do that. And use that as a starting point. Okay, well, let's... Just like that maybe and I'm not worried about this I think this shouldn't be too too hard this area here especially with this white stripe like this because I just need to carry this blue down like that and the orange and the other blue look like they're pretty good already I might bend them a little bit but okay I think that's that's a good start pretty 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 good start so just to help get things roughed in now I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the hood logo and chuck it on because I know how this is supposed to fit with respect to these lines and over the size of the hood so let's let's see is it in here yeah so I'm just finding them by making them visible and invisible that and I'm just gonna duplicate that chuck it in here it looks like ah oh, okay so this is a, a layer I just took let's see if I can find it uh, it's just this golf logo but when I trimmed it out there's a little bit of a white trim on the outside when I went with the magic wand so just to clean it up I dropped this this outer glow, this inner glow on it, in blue, right? So it's just a, a low opacity. I picked the blue off of the car, small size, basically just to kind of, if you see it here, just to kind of take the edge off. There, 
you see to click it on and off. Just so it's not a nice, harsh, uh, abrupt change. Okay, so let's go ahead then and center this guy like so. And what I'm going to do is, oh, hmm, maybe this, I need to do this again. Because, so this is a smart object, and you can see it's, you know, it's at 100%, it's not getting much bigger. So, let's actually do that again from scratch then. Sorry if this is a little bit uh, unorganized. I actually haven't done any planning whatsoever for this episode. I just decided to, to start recording kind of on a whim. So, magic wand, click on the background. I could, you know, do what I normally do, duplicate into a new layer, put this, delete the background, blah, 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 blah. But if you press Control shift i you can invert the selection, and I can just copy it like that, so I don't even need to, to mess around with that. Paste it in here, convert to a smart object. Okay, so we have a little bit bigger, rotate it 90 degrees, something a little bit bigger to work with. The colors are a little bit different. I think that's why I picked this logo. What I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this in now, like as is and then go back later and I'll show you how to edit these smart objects so there's a little bit of a trick you can actually open these objects up and then edit them and then you'll see the changes in your file uh, won't worry about it right now but I'll show you that in a later episode right now I'm just going to get the car started and go from there so let's pop it on the center let's get rid of this guy and let's just get him sized in nicely and then we'll go from there so I don't want so basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm sizing it so that it fits but I'm also trying to avoid so if you can see right here these are the vents right here I'm trying to avoid the logo going over these vents because that's just going to be a total pain in the keister and I think that would actually look kind of crappy even if you did it perfectly going over these would look really crappy because things would get really distorted so I think that's not bad I think I could afford to make it slightly larger maybe like so because I really I want this to fill fill out this area on the hood nicely so I really want to just make this this logo as big as possible on the hood. So I actually might move it up a little bit because I might have a little bit more room if I move it back. Let's see. Not bad. May play around with this a little bit in the future. Not quite sure yet. Just want to get this roughed in right now. Uh, so, let's put that in there, and let's just do a couple of other little, let's rename, housekeeping stuff, this is, let's call that hood stripes, because that's the, the hood stripes, and uh, let's, let's mask this off now, so we don't have to worry about this junk on the on the roof and everything so if you if you long click on any of these buttons that have a little arrow next to it right here you can open up a subset of options for it for example uh, direct the um, the marquee tools you can have a lip so you can pick a single a single row or column of, of pixels or the magic wand has this quick selection tool and the pen has all of this and if you long click on the shapes you can get different shapes and if you long click on the lasso tool you can get the, the polygonal lasso tool so the regular lasso tool lets you just do a, a freehand selection like so and as you can imagine the polygonal you click multiple times and you can make a polygon so let's just do that so click around here not you don't need to be too careful because this is a mask so it's not a not the biggest deal that it needs to be perfect you can always refine the mask later but I'm just trying to like here that's not a big deal go around like so 
Bring them back up. And that. And we hit add mask. So now instead of adding a mask like we did in the in that right motorsports car, the previous one, you were adding masks to layers. Now we're gonna add a mask to this entire group. Okay, so instead of having a single layer clicked and then adding the mask, you just click on the group, you hit add layer mask. Oop, there, see, add layer mask. And we've masked the entire group, as you can see here, which we can go on the, the group mask like this and we can, we can paint stuff on it with the black or we can paint stuff off it with the white, just like a regular mask. Okay, so that's uh, a really helpful tool that you know you guys might be able to get some use out of. Here, for example, right? I cut it a little close, so let's just come in here and and paint the mask back a little bit, just so we don't have any issues running in with that. So let's fill in a couple of these little uh, little problem areas now just so we don't have to deal with them later. The vents, this piece here, and I think, but I'll do is I'll just paint this guy blue for now. And then when I get the hood stripes finalized, I'll actually carry these, these stripes in. It looks like it follows actually pretty nicely. So this might, this whole piece here might actually just be this, this light blue color. Okay, so now we're in for a little bit of challenge because I have no clue whatsoever where some of these things are on the template. These look like vents, so let's work on that assumption and go ahead and paint these guys blue. And survey says nope. Survey says nope. Survey says no. No one on every case on that one. Okay, so it's this one here. And the real point I'm trying to emphasize here is that it's easier to, one of the main benefits of using layers is the versatility you can have, right? I didn't have to go in and do this stuff again from scratch. I just yanked it off of a car. I've already done, slapped it on here. It looks great because I've already spent hours, per, you know, I wouldn't say perfecting, but doing my best to get these lines as nice as possible and so now I don't have to do it again because it's already done for me. So let's, uh, let's do this thing now. I have no idea whatsoever where this piece is on the template. So let's do a little bit of a technique that I use to find random pieces on the template. First thing I do is I pick a color that's not in the paint scheme. So this is blue and orange. So let's just go for, I don't know, red. So what I do is I grab the rectangle tool. I go all the way up to the top and I just paint half the canvas red. And this piece that I want is colored red. So I'll take it, I'll cut it in half again, take another preview and now it's not. So the piece I want is in this area somewhere, right up here, right? The other half that wasn't painted. So I cut it in half again. And it's not painted. Okay, so this piece is over here somewhere on this side. So I cut it in half again. It's like playing 20, 20 questions. So you just keep trying to narrow it down. So this piece is half painted. So the piece that I want is covered half with red and half with white. So this piece here, right here, covered half with red and half with white. I will bet you $10 if anyone wants to take a bet that this is the piece that I want to paint. Gonna get rid of that now. And bang. So this doing stuff like this basically eliminates the need for things like not that these these things are bad. These are great tools, they're very useful tools that a lot of people can use, but things like the paint helpers, right? If you just you know 
put a tiny bit of a tiny bit of time into it, you can find all of these pieces really easily. And if there's something that's not on the paint helper, that can be a real problem. But now, with this little technique of finding spots, no problem. So let's just uh, leave that for now. I don't really like how these are kind of on the half pixels. So maybe I can, uh, can I, no I can't. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do this on camera. I'll do this off camera as so I'll go in here, I'll grab all of these, all of these layers and uh, all of these rectangular shapes and kind of do this kind of thing where I get them like, come on get where you need get where you need to go so basically I'm just control T free transforming and I'm just getting them right onto the pixel like that so I have nice nice sharp lines but you know that's gonna be incredibly boring for you to watch so I'll do that off camera what I do want to do just before I end the episode, because it should be pretty quick to do, is I want to do the roof and maybe one of the sides. So let's just get to it and do the roof. The roof is actually pretty easy. I'm not even going to look for the layer. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to click one of these rectangles and uh, hopefully find it. Is that it? No. This is all. Is this it? Oh, it's like an... Ah, oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, maybe it's in like a million pieces. Not so bad. Okay, so let's just take that whole group and we'll sort through it on this template. Is there a, a clear uh, midpoint to it? No, there's not. Okay. So let's grab roof delete the mask because uh, we don't want any masks on it. We'll do that after. And so by the looks of it, let's grab this piece here because this was to fill in one of the side pieces. We don't need that anymore. This was to fill in this piece here. So it looks like the center of the car runs between these two blue lines. Okay, let's get rid of this these two blue lines here. So let's do that. Where's the center of the car? It's right here. Oh crap, I lost it. Uh, there it is. So the, come on. The center of the car is right here. So let's just position it like that. And so these stripes should go pretty far to the, to the left and the right of the car, right? I think that this template, the pieces are actually bigger than the Porsche, which is nice because it gives you more space to work with. And so then what we'll do is we'll just grab, we'll free transform the group just like we did with the hood. The width is fine. So let's just grab the height and stretch it out a little bit just to make everything a little bit bigger. Let's go that far, and then we'll go from there. Let's see how we look. So let's see. It might be too fat, so that's what I'm worried about. But it doesn't look too bad. Let's take this off and take a look. Hmm. Shadow cast some weird stuff on there. So that doesn't look too bad. I actually kind of like that. Might be a little too fat, but I won't do that right now. I don't think I'm going to worry about that right now. I might go back and thin some of these lines out. It may happen naturally when I go in here and, and, and tweak these to get them all on the pixel. These things might thin themselves out a little bit, some of these lines. So I don't think I'm going to worry about that. I am just want to get the rough idea in right now. So let's grab this then so this guy doesn't run along length of the hoods. So we'll just drag this really wide so it covers the whole hood and then we'll mask it off just like we did the hood. 
just a couple clicks. So I don't need to worry about that stuff too much. Because I don't plan on painting there. That and the basket group. Okay. So what we get is this. So not too shabby already. We got things starting to come together. I think one thing I might want to do is actually grab these layers and move them in towards the center of the car a little bit. Just a little bit. Might help a couple things. It might help this line right here. Basically, I want to put the edge of this line on the inside of the, the kind of snout piece right here. So it'll help move it in and fill in this big gap on the front. But it'll also help that I don't have to paint this tiny little blue stripe down the middle. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. This is just my thought process for the future. Okay, so let's just do the side now. So I know the side of this car is in like a million different pieces. Because uh, of the way I did these curved lines right here and there's another curved line here so I'm not gonna be able to take these pieces off because these are rastered these lines are rastered layers they're not shapes so we'll talk about that probably next episode when I actually start doing the curved lines on the BMW how I do these and and why I can't transfer them but uh, and they involve using these paths we're not gonna talk about it right now so let's just get what we can get okay so let's just grab the whole left side dump it onto the BMW and again there's no there's no colors to it because what's on the left side is just this so let's actually grab let's grab this and we'll just call it base colors maybe uh, no I don't I'm not gonna do that We'll just uh, we'll put this in the left side too. So we'll just, we'll just draw a big big ass blue box that covers the left side. Let's make it blue. That we'll dump it in here. It automatically goes to the bottom of the group. So that's why everything suddenly becomes visible. And I'm gonna have to go in here now. Jeez, so many layers. This is a lot of layers. Uh. <sighs> Door handles. Well, that can go. I don't want door handles. Oh. So we'll just we'll turn those off. Uh, let's turn all that. Let's turn everything off. Let's just take it one piece at a time. So this stuff. Top. Which is informatively called top, top left side art. Looks like it's all the curvy stuff. And you can see, or at least mostly, is curved stuff. You can see that it's mostly rastered layers. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and delete all that crap. This stuff looks good. This stuff is all, it's all shapes. Which is like a billion different pieces. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. It's like a billion pieces because there's pieces here and there's pieces here and they're all I put them all in separate groups for some some reason let's just get, get rid of that for now uh, I wish I had been a little more tidy with this file so let's get rid of that so top stripes yeah so like for example this this piece here is here is called top stripes and then I had to make a copy of it and move it here for this piece here. So that's why there's two, and that's why it's a little bit of a mess. And so this stuff, I don't want this stuff. Let's just get rid of that stuff for now. Uh, and let's move these here and get rid of the groups. Okay, so now we just have this piece here like so it's just a bunch of rectangles and circles so now we can get this roughed in 
bass still popping up all the time, as per usual. So, let's see now. These little dotty th things here should go under the door, just under the door handle, it looks like. And maybe uh, a little bit bigger. Again, these are all, all uh, uh, shape layers, so no problem with resizing them. Mm. Okay, that's not too bad. I kind of like that. Looks good for a start. There's all these little pieces here that are not finished because they were... Ooh, come on. They're coming out from behind these badges and stuff. I'm going to leave them for now because I'm still going to be using what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to put some stuff on here and then I might just move these guys forward so that they come out. Uh, I think I might need to put a little bit of thought into that before I do it. So I might do that off camera. But I think for now that's a good start. So, as you can see, we have a partially painted car now. And I think I think that's where I'm going to end this episode. Oh god, yeah, it is where I'm going to end this episode. So, covered a few new things today, a few old things. Uh, one thing is, again, why you want to use shapes and not raster your layers at the end of the day, because you can always go back and use them again and again and again on different cars. We talked... Well, now you know that you can use layer masks on groups if you haven't been playing with that already, and I don't know, that's about it. Sorry this episode was a little bit disorganized, but uh, next time we'll actually think of a few things to talk about. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, have a good day, and uh, happy painting. Bye.